Welcome to a lockdown edition of Cubase Tips. Today I'm going to show you how to set up multiple outputs with Halley and Sonic and just get your head around how um, this kind of stuff works. So here we got Halley and Sonic loaded up. And on the left of Halley and Sonic, you'll notice that there are 16 individual slots. And each one of these slots we can load an instrument into. So that means we can have up to 16 different sounds, but we can control in Cubase only using one instance of Halley. So if I was just to quickly load up some things here, let's load up a, a guitar sound and let's grab a bass sound or, or, yeah bass sound let's just click anything uh, and let's load up a keyboard of some kind so we have three different instruments loaded up now by default the only instrument you will hear when playing with the instrument track will be the guitar which is on MIDI channel one okay now the other two are also going to have their own MIDI channel so when you go to play them, you're not really going to hear them unless you have created two MIDI channels. Oh, let's create another one. And then you go to play and you'll see that the, the number lights up. Now, these MIDI channels are controlling these individual instruments here. OK, so we have three different instruments which are controlled with three different MIDI channels. Now. If you can't hear anything when you're playing on your keyboard or clicking the, the keys down here, that is because the MIDI channels that you've created have not connected to this instance of Halley and Sonic. And just to quickly check that, you need to go to your inspector, and then while you've got the MIDI track selected, just check that your output is connected to Halley and Sonic. Sometimes it might say it's not connected to anything. And if this happens, that means when you go to play the notes, it's not actually triggering anything because Cubase doesn't know where to send that MIDI information. So we're telling it to send it to these instances of Halley and Sonic. Usually when you select like an instrument track and then right click to add MIDI tracks and then add X amount of MIDI tracks, usually they automatically connect to the instance that you have selected. So if you forgot to select it when doing this, you might have to manually route them. Anyway, so now that you know how this kind of thing works, the audio for all of these will all be sent through the same output. So they'll be on the default output. As you can see in the mixer here, there's just one channel. These are MIDI channels. We, I normally turn these off, but um, as you can see, let me just rescale this as well. Wow. There we are. As you can see in the mixer here, we just have one channel because all of those instruments are sharing the same output. So in order to split the outputs so we can have an audio channel in the mixer for each instrument that we want to use, we need to go over to the mix settings here. Okay. And this will show you all of the outputs on the right column, the far right column, and all of them say main because they're going to the main stereo output. If you want to create individual outputs for every instrument that you, you're using or loaded into Halley and Sonic, you just need to simply select one of the channels and send them to a different output. So main is output one. I'm going to send the fretless bass to output two, and then I'm going to send the amp to wah times patch to output three. Now, again, if we go to play something, we're still not going to hear anything. But you can see in the mixer here that the audio has been sent to these channels. The only thing we need to do now in Cubase is to actually create those audio tracks and enable them so we can hear everything. Now, to do this, you go up to the right zone, click on it, go to your um, VSTI tab, and you'll see an instance of our instrument track, which we created here, the Hallian Sonic instrument track. If you rename this to something, I don't know, Halion 1, it'll make it easier for when you are looking for your list of instrument tracks. So what we need to do now is go over to the right here where you see the Activate Outputs tab. Click on this and you'll see that we have some slots available. Okay, so all we need to do is just check the slots. And when you check the slots, you'll get some channels created in the mixer. Okay, and now you'll have your outputs. Whoops, let me just load up this mixer, it's much easier. Now we'll have the outputs for those instruments on the separate channels. Pretty simple stuff, right? 
Now, one thing you need to remember when working in this way is something that Cubase has never really done is if I go to rename the MIDI track here, and I call it bass, because it's not an actual audio track, it's just a MIDI track, don't expect it to rename things in the mixer. I mean, it'd be great if it did, but it doesn't, unfortunately. So when you're naming stuff, you'll have to rename it in the mixer as well. So that channel there can be bass, and then that's one, what is it, guitar or something like that? And then we just rename them here. So it's a little bit of faffing around. But this is how you generally set up things um, in one particular way. The other way you can work with multiple instruments is by loading multiple instances of Halion Sonic and only using one instrument on the main uh, slot at the top here. Now, the only drawback to this is if your computer isn't necessarily super powerful, if you've got loads of single instances of Halion Sonic loaded up, it's going to put a little bit more strain on your system resources. Whereas if you're loading one instance and loading lots of patches into that instance, it kind of just means that you're not going to be using as much CPU, although you'll be using probably the same amount of RAM, if not a tiny little bit less. But most of these things when you load them up don't really eat into much RAM. It's mainly just patches. So there we go. That is how you set up your outputs for Halion Sonic SE inside of Cubase. And the other thing actually I forgot to mention is with the uh, MIDI tracks when you create them, you'll notice here with the numbers, that's channel one, channel two, channel three. And by default, when you insert a new instrument into one of these slots, um, the MIDI channel is actually the same as the number channel. So that'll be MIDI channel three, this will be MIDI channel four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, etc., etc. And if you go over to the MIDI tab, if you ever want to change what number the MIDI channel is, you can do it from here. So let's say I want all of those instruments to be triggered just by this one channel here. I can just set these two instruments to MIDI channel one. So when I play it, you know, I've still got all of the audio coming out of the different outputs, but I can control all three of the instruments just by using one track. So where this opens up like creative potential is when you're layering patches together inside of Halion Sonic to create, you know, one instrument essentially with an interesting sound to it. And then you can do things like use the mixer to balance the levels and you can adjust the pan of the individual instruments as well. So it's just a little bit of food for four. So there we go, everyone. Hopefully you found this useful. If you've got any questions about setting this up, then obviously leave them in the comments box below and I'll see you all next time in another Cubase Tips video.